I'm Dick Beardsley. Welcome to the fishing scene. Hey folks, we are having a ball today. Hey, I just got myself a nice crappie. I've got uh, Josh Marstoon with me and uh, Jordan Seeley along with me. There are a couple of, couple of guys from Detroit Lakes and they're out fishing with me today. And that's kind of what we're gonna talk a little bit about today, folks. Yeah, we're gonna you know, show you how we're catching crappies out here in late August, but I also wanna talk about the importance of getting young people out on fishing because they basically are the future of our sport. And nowadays with so many kids into so many other things like Nintendo and computers and you know, of course all the sports activities that take place out there, fishing is something that is just such a wonderful sport. You can continue to do it, you know, forever and ever. So we're gonna talk about crappie fishing, talk about fishing with young people, all the action and more coming up after this from our sponsors on the fishing scene. Nice crop. Hey, folks, late summertime crappie action, it can be a lot of fun. You know, we've had a couple of crappie shows this summer. We've talked about shallow water fishing early in the year, fishing for those deep water crappies in the middle of the summertime. And now as we start heading into the fall, believe it or not, we're heading into the fall season now, crappies are still very, very catchable. Boy, we're, uh, we're just gonna be doing catch and release today, although those would be great for the frying pan. Now what we're doing today, folks, we're on a day where the, the water temperature continues to start cooling down. We're in the upper 60s to around 70, 71 degrees now. A lot different than it was just uh, uh, two or three weeks ago when the water temperatures were up into the 80s. And what we're doing here, the crappies in the summertime, they like to hang out in that deeper water area. Now as we get into fall, they will actually start moving back into that shallower water area not as shallow as they are in the very early springtime when they're in there looking for the warmer water, but the areas that you want to key on for crappies this time of the year, and we're talking like late August now, is where the deep water weed lines are. That's a good area. Or if you get lakes, like the lake we're on today now, it's lined with lily pads. On the edge of those lily pads, it drops off into really deep water. And when I say really deep, the lily pads are up in three or four feet of water. And then when you get on the edge of those pads, it drops into 10 or 12 feet of water. And then just out from there, a boat length, it's 15 to 19 feet. So deep water, the crappies can get in there where it's cooler in the deeper water or up shallower where there's all kinds of insects and bait fish and they can really do some heavy feeding. Now what we're using today, Josh, Jordan, and myself, is it's very basic. We're using a very small jig, a one 32nd ounce jig, and we've got that tipped with a rubber tail. And then, but the key here now, the key is we're not using any live bait, but what we are doing is to get down below the small crappies, down below the sunfish that are out there, is you want to go with a very small piece of split shot about a, anywhere from a foot to a foot and a half above your jig. Then what we do is we cast out, and I'm gonna move us in just a hair, we cast out and we slowly let that jig sink down. Now we go with a small jig, if you go with a bigger jig, that'll get you down below those sunfish real quick, but that bigger jig just doesn't seem to, uh, to enhance the crappie bite. They want that smaller type of jig on there. So what we do then, is we, uh, we cast out, let it sink a little bit, and then you slowly start to reel. Now, if you're reeling too slow, you'll start hooking up with the weeds towards the bottom. If you're reeling too fast, you're probably not gonna get any bites. So you wanna be just above the top of those weeds on the bottom. Now, the crappies, a lot of times, aren't gonna just really bite it really, really hard. You'll feel just a little bit of a pull on there and then you want to just slowly set the hook. So if you get in towards the boat, you haven't got a fish yet, reel it back in, and then make another cast out in that direction. Actually, I got to get in just a hair closer because right now, anyhow, they seem to be just off the edge of those pads. I'm going to move us in a little closer. I'm using my electric trolling motor, and that's enough. 
Oh, I just missed one. That's another thing. You want to be very, very quiet. Crappies are there. Looks like Jordan's got had Jordan had one on. Crappies they spook very easily. The water is fairly clear, and uh, so you want to use your electric trolling motor as much as possible, and you want to stay out away from the area where those fish are as far as you can, but still be able to get your lure in close to them. I, I got a feeling I'm going to get one here. I just cast up right off the edge of those pads. And again, you know, I've always mentioned about the importance of having Polaroid sunglasses, but boy, it really makes a big difference on a day like this. There, Jordan's got one. All right. Yeah, there's a crappie. Oh, yeah. Thinks he's a bass, I think. All right. Oh, oh, I just had one. Just had one. And folks, yeah, Jordan got one there. When uh, the key here is too is when you get cl fairly close to the boat and you think, well, I might as well reel it in quick because there's no fish down there. Let that thing go, your jig, sink almost right down straight below the boat just off the bottom. A lot of those fish, oh, I just missed one again. We're out in deeper water. Some of those fish will be even deeper. So don't uh, be afraid to let that jig fall right below the bottom of the boat. I'll be back with more crappie action after this. Gosh, Jordan, I know you guys, uh, you like to fish. I, I sure appreciate you coming on the, uh, the fishing scene with me. Now, before, when we first got out here and we were just getting the camera set up and stuff, we were catching some crappies and, uh, oh, there I got one. You saw that big northern come up and grab yeah. that crappie, huh? That was, that was cool. Looking. Yeah, there's a crappie coming up here right now. That was a pretty good size northern too, though. Yeah, that was. And boy, he uh, he put some teeth marks in that old crappie. There's a nice crappie. Yeah, there we go. Just got it in the, the boat here. We'll get him back in the, the water here. And again, like I was saying before, folks, you you know, people say, well, gosh, you know, when you're when you're catching fish, you can't be talking because you're going to scare the fish. It's not the talking that scares the fish. It's the uh, jumping up and down in the boat, dropping the tackle box, uh, things like that. That's that vibrations goes right down into the water. The next time that you're out, say, swimming in the lake, and you wonder how much like stepping or jumping in the bottom of the boat or dropping a tackle box, how much noise that would make and how it affects the fish. Grab a couple of rocks. Oh, there's one, a little sunny. Go down below the surface of the water, get your head underneath water, and take those rocks and click them together. You, will, you cannot believe how much you can hear that noise down there. So if you can hear it, you can imagine what the fish whose senses are so much more sensitive than ours are, the, uh, how much they can hear that. So that's what's gonna spook fish more than anything. It's not gonna be talking or even yelling, but jumping around in the boat, no doubt that's gonna do it. I'm gonna get us in a little bit closer again. And like I said, you want to stay out as far as you can, but because we're using such, there's one. Oh, that one feels like not too bad. Oh, he just got off. Hey, off. Um, I know, one part of the things, guys, as you probably know, because I know you guys both fish quite a bit, is that the, the crappies have what they call a paper-thin mouth, and you can actually see right through the, uh, their mouth. So that's why you want to have good, sharp hooks, but if you set it too hard, what's going to happen is that... Uh, that bait's gonna come popping right out. And if you're expecting these fish to just really wallop your jig and you're gonna, you know, just boom, it's gonna really thunk it, that's probably not gonna be the case. Usually you just get a very, oh, I just missed one, a very slight tug, and that's when you get that very slight tug. There's one right there. A lot of people think it's gonna be a, uh, like it's a weed, but like right here, just that little tug. And it's a crappie. Yeah, not a bad crappie. Good eat. I mean, all these crappies we're catching, we're not, we haven't got any big ones yet, but we're getting nice eater-sized crappie. And if you have uh, kids out or or just want to have some fun fishing and a lot of action, if you get on a school of crappies or sunfish for that matter, um, there, Jordan's got one. You're gonna get yourself. Uh, Oh yeah, and the nice thing about this clear water, folks, with Polaroid sunglasses, you can see the flash. That's, there's a nice crappie there. That's a nice crappie. Yeah, all right, Jordan, good job. Yeah, there's a, there's, a, there's a nice crappie. Nice crappie, good job. But you can see that flash of the uh, fish down there 
shining in the sunshine. Today we've got absolutely clear skies. The air temperature is about, oh, 75 degrees. Water temperature, like I said, upper 60s, low 70s. And you couldn't ask for a nicer day to be out fishing. One thing you'll notice this time of the year is that compared to like two months ago in the month, there's one, in the month of June, you, uh, you can get out here on the lake like we are today. Absolutely no other boats out there on the lake. All right, Josh, you got one? All right, we got one. Josh has one. Jordan just caught one. And folks, th some of the best fishing of the year is right now until the ice freezes up. All right, we'll get that one back and get a, yep, there. There's a nice yeah, there's a nice crappie. All right, Josh just got one. And it, you can just have a ball. It's a great time, especially to get kids out on the water that uh, you maybe want to introduce to the sport of fishing. And all it takes is to get a little action like we're having today. And you, they'll, they'll want to come back for more and more and more. Are you jigging it while you reel in or are you just reeling in or? I'm just reeling real reeling steady, in. yep. But sometimes, you know, if you just kind of quit reeling and drop it, there, there's a, there's a crop. Gosh, that's so, can you see him down there, guys? Yeah. Okay. Oh, he just got off. But I mean, what more fun can you have? You get out here, you get on fish, and, you know, first cast or two, we're on fish, and, and when the bite's going, you know, they'll, they'll slack off a little bit for a while, I would imagine. And then you might have to move down the weed line a little bit and see where you can get located at another school. But then they'll start turning back on again. It's just kind of like you and I, we don't eat constantly. And the fish are the same way. They don't eat constantly, but they do small meals numerous times during the day. There's a nice one. Ooh, there's a bit dandy here. There's a nice one. How much does he weigh? Oh, he's about, about a pound. Got that one out deeper. Nice fish. Not a huge fish, but fun. There's one. Yeah. Triple. Yeah, look at this. All right. Josh got one. The Beards has got one. Oh, man. Fish all over the boat. This is fun. Looks like yours is a little bit bigger now, huh? Josh is kind of big. Whoa. Panfish fishing is sometimes more exciting than big northern. Oh, it is. Because the thing is, you, you get on the school of them. And the action is just like nonstop. That's why it's so good to get, you know, like, especially when you're introducing, you know, kids to fishing. I mean, my gosh, what kid wouldn't have, oh, there's one, wouldn't have fun doing this. Come on, buddy, there you go. All right, little guy there, we'll get him back in the water. Do you get one, Jordan? Right down off the bottom, guys, another bigger one. Oh, there, Jordan, you got one? Oh, I mean, Josh had one. All right, Jordan's got one. I, I can see it down there, I can't. You know, it's not all that big, but it's oh, a good hey. fighter. You know, now again, another nice eating size crappie, 
But uh, not huge, but boy, that one, Jordan, that one put up a good fight, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, he acted like he was a pound. Yeah. No, they're, uh, they're, they're a little more aggressive today than they have been. There we go. Yeah, they do. Yeah, just a little one there. I know, this is a lot of fun. That heron's really pretty over there. Yeah, isn't that though? Really pretty. It almost looks yeah. like a statue. Yeah. Got another one, Josh? Yeah. I mean, Jordan? Yeah. I mean, Josh? <laughs> Our moms confuse us every oh. time, too, so I... Oh, there's one. Oh, that was a nice one, too. You know, the ones that get off are always nice. Yeah. They're always the big ones. Not too big. The small fish, they really like to fight. Yeah, they're a lot more aggressive, aren't they? They fight more than them big ones. Yeah. That one, Jordan? Yeah. Or Josh, I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah, another crop. Oh, nice! Thinks he's a bass. I know it! Coming out of the water. Yeah, you bet. There we go. All right. Hey, folks. Crappie fishing, the end of August. Don't wait until next spring to start catching crappies, you can do it right now on all area lakes. Please remember to practice selective harvesting. By doing so, we'll continue to have great fishing for years to come. I'm Dick Beards, and I'd like to thank my camera woman, Raina Benson, and to Josh and Jordan for joining me today on the fishing scene. I'll see you out on the water.